So, ladies and gentlemen, today marks three years sober. And um, I'd just like to come on with valuable information on how I've overcome alcohol addiction. First of all, they say one in five people suffer with ADHD and they don't know they're suffering. Um, a lot of people suffer with alcohol addiction um, and they don't even know they're suffering with alcohol addiction, let alone ADHD. So one in five people with ADHD, they say suffer with alcohol addiction and they don't even know it. So I'm here to spread love, spread a positive message on it's okay not to be okay and it's okay to suffer with alcohol addiction as long as you're trying to better yourself today. So I'm going to give you a few tips, right? So first of all, yeah, as you can see here, right, I am surrounded by the monster. I sleep with the monster, right, and it makes me feel alive, right? The secret and the tip what I would give in this video is um, I would become comfortable around it. The reason why this is, is because, first of all, you can't run from it. I've ran from alcohol for about 10 years. Um, you know, I've ran all over the world. I've constantly ran from my problems and I got anxiety anytime I came around alcohol. But that led me to go back on the drink because I wasn't comfortable around it. So if you ask me now, if you put 10 Israeli lesbians in a bat and fill that bat up with espresso martini, I tell you, you're off your rocker if you ask me to get in that bat filled with alcohol. There's not a hope in a million years. So let's say you don't become comfortable around alcohol and you get invited to this party, you know, a 40th birthday party, a wedding, or whatever you get invited to. More than likely because you didn't train your mind to be comfortable around alcohol, you're going to suffer with anxiety. You're not going to be comfortable at, around alcohol at the wedding, at the 40th birthday party. So you're going to suffer with so much anxiety when you're asked to go on the dance floor, when people's drunk around you, okay? So what's the first thing you do? The first thing you do is when you're not comfortable around alcohol is you go and drink. You ruin the wedding, you ruin the 40th birthday party because you are not used to being around alcohol. So in the message in this video is I learned to become comfortable around it. Um, you can never run from it. So what I would do is, the first, the first tip in this video is, um, if you think you have a problem, then 99%, actually 99 billion percent, you do have a problem. Um, so it's okay, it's okay to have a problem, it's okay to understand it, but we can only understand it, you know, in order to understand it, that's how you overcome it. So basically, I would go to your local bar, I would socialise, I would surround myself with, with the drink, um, you're going to want to drink. Look, I'm one drink away from the devil appearing on earth. You know, this is how comfortable I am with alcohol. So you have to be this comfortable with alcohol in order to overcome it. Because the truth is, you know, you never defeat alcohol. You know, I was on the bus there a while ago and, and I met a friend of mine, a girl. And she, she told me, basically, when it's sunny out, why are you not dying to go on a mad one? And the truth is, every day I'm dying to go on a mad one. Life, dealing with real life problems is harder than using alcohol as escapism to run away from the problem but I'm not going to do that I'm not going to use any excuse to drink myself to death and start doing outrageous things and basically you know make my mental health suffer for what 20 minutes of fun you know an hour or two of fun so the first message in this video is you have to surround yourself with it you can't run there's no if buts maybes let's end this tip on a, on a short note let's say your boss your boss invite you out for dinner, you go out for dinner with him and he's okay, he can handle his drink and you can't and he's drinking, are you going to kick up a fuss that your boss, your boss can drink and you can't or are you going to, you know, drink, you're going to get sacked, you're going to embarrass yourself you know, it's it's perfectly fine the, the problem is, right, your boss might not be a cunt under the influence of alcohol but you are, you're an obnoxious, egotistic, arrogant cunt under the influence of alcohol but that's perfectly fine. So you're not an arrogant, egotistic head case sober. So that's all that matters. So the first message in this video is surround yourself for alcohol and you become comfortable around it. You become confident. So last week was my girlfriend's birthday. And what I done with my girlfriend's birthday was I uh, basically went out for drinks with her, my favorite bar, Pygmalion. 
and we were in there and I was actually getting a little bit anxiety at the start because I haven't been around alcohol in a good world because Covid has basically stopped this from happening has stopped me from socialising so when I got in at the start, the first 10 20 minutes, I was kind of a, getting a bit anxious, you know, everyone drunk, you know, the usual obnoxious cunt, you know, people coming up, acting the hard man on drink. Not everybody, but one or two, do you know what I mean? They're the people that remind me of who I used to be, and that's what gives me strength to go on, because I am not that arrogant, obnoxious, egotistic cunt that I used to be. So that's the reason why you surround yourself with it, because you visualise who you used to be, to who you are now and these people that are still suffering you can either help them you can push them to be a better person and use everybody for strength and look there's no way you can run I tried to run for 10 years the only way to overcome alcohol addiction is surround yourself with alcohol it's everywhere it's on every shop corner it's on every street you know it's in every household it's in every kitchen to become comfortable and confident around alcohol you must surround yourself with alcohol on a day-to-day -day basis because even if you don't want to surround yourself with alcohol it's going to be everywhere you know your friends are going to be drinking your family's going to be drinking it's going to be in shops it's it's you know it's everywhere but that's okay learn to love yourself and enjoy yourself without alcohol and you get all the answers you need so tip two okay tip two in this video is non-alcoholic drinks right terry flower um inspired me to talk about non-alcoholic drinks and a good friend of mine, Lucky. So so basically, um, I never drank non-alcoholic drinks before, right? So we have here a Desperado, right? It's a Desperado virgin and I'm three years sober and the reason why I'm drinking non-alcoholic Desperado is, I'll tell you now in one minute. See, the Desperado version, right? It's non-alcoholic, it's citrus and lemon zest, basically lemonade, without the tequila and without the beer. Beer in the first place, now it tastes good, it tastes like stew, it tastes like belches. So anyway, here we go, right? So, I've seen a post a year ago or, or a while ago, right? And someone put on the story, what the fuck is the point in non-alcoholic drink, non-alcoholic gin, this and that? Like, come here to me, listen to me. I'll tell you what is the point, right? So, you go to the nightclub, you're socialising, you're in the bar, right? What happens, right? You have a black horn or a coke in your hand and the person that is drinking is starting to feel very uncomfortable because you're not drinking. You can enjoy yourself without it. He needs alcohol to enjoy himself with it. So basically, what happens here is, he asks you, are you ready? You're going to know this one. Are you okay? 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 Yeah, I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm just enjoying myself. I'm perfectly fine. Do you want anything? Do you want anything? Are you okay? Are you okay? He starts to sound like Michael Jackson in Smooth Criminal. Any are you okay? Are you okay, Yanny? Any are you okay? Are you okay, Yanny? Any are you okay? Are you okay, Yanny? Of course I'm fucking okay. I'm enjoying myself without drink. So here's the question, and here's the answer to this non-alcoholic solution. Why non-alcoholic beverages when you go out? So if I'm in the club, right, and we have a non-alcoholic desperado in my hand, right? The person that is so drunk, right, so delusional, he now thinks that you are drinking. And he does think that he doesn't have a problem, right? But anyway. That saves the question, right? When he comes up to you, are you okay? 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 That's what it sounds like, man. People make me out to be fucking mental. Can you imagine having to listen to that on a night out? You know, I'm wearing a fucking lemon or peach suit or a purple corduroy, you know, outfit. You know, denim jacket, pink short to match. You know, pair of no, jungle and wallabies. And he's asking me, are you okay? Of course I'm okay. I'm wearing fucking jungle and wallabies with a purple suit in a nightclub when everyone's fucking drunk, you know? So, the same person, I'll give you a laugh, right? The same person that asks you about non-alcoholic drinks, right? Is the same person that, sorry, the same person that asks you about 
are you okay? And keeps asking and keeps going on and on about it. It's the same person, the same cunt, that asks you just to have one drink. So I'll tell you why I won't have one drink, right? First of all, I never liked alcohol. Or you hated alcohol. I used alcohol as escapism, right? Because everyone made me out to be fucking mental. If you haven't noticed, I'm very fucking different, right? So, if you haven't noticed, you know, are you okay? Are you okay? Are you okay? See, see what I mean? These people, these people start to make me out to be mental, right? But anyway, so, he just, the people that ask you, you know, just have one drink. So, first of all, alcohol put my grandmother in the state of depression and left her in homes numerous of times, right? Alcohol has ruined my family's life. It has ruined my life, right? So you mightn't be able to see it, right? I do look beautiful, but there's a scar right down here, right? And there's a scar on my chest, okay? It was because of alcohol, my obnoxious, egotistic, arrogant, and scumbag low-life behavior that I got stabbed, right? Everyone says, ah, you didn't deserve to get stabbed, Glenn. Yes, I did. And the truth is, I don't even know what happened that night, and I apologize to anybody that I upset over the years for my obnoxious, egotistic, arrogant, and scumbag behavior. But we won't get into that too much. We'll leave that for the next tip. But anyway, you know, people say you can't use the excuse for drink because of your actions. People say you can't use, you know, you know, mental health, this and that. But, you know, why was I outraged? I was outraged because I was suffering with ADHD. I was outraged because I was suffering with OCD. I was outraged because of traits of psychosis. I'm even fucking lactose intolerant. Of course I'm going to be a raving nutcase when you put a drug on top of that. And when I say a drug, alcohol, the most delusional drug in the world. So, you know, you go out, you're on a night out. You've no excuse now, right? You're on a night out. You go out on that night out, yeah? And you go to the bar, right? You dress like a fucking prince and you order a non-alcoholic beer and you avoid all these negative energy vampires that come at you and ask you a million times like Michael Jackson. It's like, I've seen Michael Jackson when I was younger. I was very blessed me and my brought up to the concert, but it's, it's one of the flashbacks, you know, to Smooth Criminal. Any are you okay? Are you okay, Annie? Any are you okay? Are you okay, Annie? Any are you okay? Are you okay, Annie? You okay? You okay, Annie? That's what it feels like, right? So, you don't have to answer that bullshit anymore because you have a non-alcoholic drink in your hand. You know, you get one or two, you enjoy the night, and you hold the head high. And this person that's locked under the influence, he still thinks that you are drinking. And he still thinks that he doesn't have a problem. So that's tip two. Tip two, non-alcoholics, they're actually all right. I don't like the taste of beer, but you can get so much now, as you can see, I'm drinking a Desperado. So, tip number three is deleting social media apps. So, social media, okay? Why is it important to shut down social media apps? Why is it important to sleep right, eat right, and give yourself the best possible chance? Um, so, we had a big problem. Um, this video is, uh, is dedicated to the kid Dynamite. He doesn't want to be named. You know, he doesn't care about anything. He's just always trying to better myself and better everyone else around him, apart from himself, to be honest. He's an inspiration and because of him, I get to live live happy, live positively and live doing what I love. But anyway, enough talk and um, like I'm something of the alchemist. But back to the main point, social media, okay? So the reason why you shut down social media, right? If you're up, right? 4, 5 a.m., 3 a.m., if you're looking, scrolling at people living a lie, all the toxic behaviour, all the negative bullshit on social media, right, you're going to feel shit about yourself. I've noticed a pattern in the last three to five years about myself, right, and um, I get serious anxiety and I start to suffer with my mind when I'm scrolling and I'm up all night, right, so before you can defeat alcoholism, and you can never defeat it, you have to learn to live with it. You know, look how close I am. You know, one drink and boom, you know, revolution job, you know. Literally, I'd end up, you know, taking down Leo Radke, you know, taking down the Irish government if I had two bottles the way they're carrying on at the minute. But anyway, not to talk about that. You have to give yourself the best possible chance at life, right? You have to be on top of your game. You have to be focused, right? You have to wake up at the crack of dawn, right? You have to have all the energy in the world and 
the first thing you notice when you shut down social media, you're not going to want to do it. You're going to want to scroll. You're going to want to message every board under the sun. You're going to want to be up on like scrolling, looking at absolute Mars bars on social media. But they're not going to get you any better. They're not going to help you overcome alcohol addiction. Um, so basically, you put all the energy you have from what you would have used scrolling, you now put into yourself, your well-being. Self-help books are incredible. They've helped me so much. Not only self-help books, educating yourself. You know, there's podcasts on Blind Boy, there's podcasts on Russell Brand, Alan Carr's How to Control Alcohol. You understand the problem, right? You understand, right, why do we project our vomit every night? Why do we do outrageous things under the influence, right? Do you think you're the only one that does outrageous things under the influence? Do you think you're the only one that can't go out without causing murder, you know? The problem is, we're one drink away from being homeless, from being, you know, waking up in a coffin. You know, I was watching Amy Winehouse last night, and she got claimed for the first time. It was the do documentary I was watching. She got claimed for the first time, and she won, she won a Grammy. I think it was five Grammys or something. And she mentioned, um, very sad, I'm actually fucking nearly even getting tears, getting goosebumps thinking about it. She mentioned that when she called a friend, she brought a friend up on stage, and, uh, Oh man, it's it's addiction. Nobody talks about it, you know. Nobody nobody tells you how bad it is and you know the suffering behind it. But anyway, look, Amy Winehouse brought a friend up on stage and she said to her friend, she says, you know, it's not fun. It's boring. It's boring without drugs. And this this is it. It's would you rather life being boring alive, or you know, one night on drugs or drink, ended up in a coffin, you know, or being stabbed. I've almost committed suicide, I've almost, you know, dangered other people around me. I'm lucky that my mother is still talking to me. I'm lucky that I'm still alive. I've lost a lot of friends through addiction and mental health. So it's fine. It's fine, but look, it's never too late to change. So the third key point in this video is having energy. You know, if you don't scroll on social media, that's fine, yeah? Take a break, take six months, read Alan Carr's Health Control alcohol he has an audiobook out there if you don't read russell brand's freedom right just educate yourself now time we never have this much time in our toy life right so time we never get back so now is the most valuable time to use this time and energy instead of scrolling using it to better yourself and to learn and to understand the problem and then the problem goes away another tip in this video would be um how I how overcame alcohol was uh, I was on a night out in Sweden and um, I was looking at the drink, you know, um, and something came over me. I woke up inside, living inside a castle wall that was built in the 13th century in Gotland in Sweden. And uh, basically, you're living inside a castle wall, you have a CV that can um, take you anywhere in the globe. You can literally you can be anywhere, you can live anywhere, literally anywhere you want. New Zealand, Canada, the Cook Islands, and you're miserable. You can't look in the mirror. So that's when I had enough. And something came over me, I was studying and reading. And um, I bought a bottle of vodka. And I spent hours upon hours looking at it. And I said to myself, right, I'm gonna drink it. I'm gonna have one last party. I'm gonna run amok. And if I'm still the same on it, then I'll never drink again. If somehow I can enjoy myself on it without doing stupid stuff, then, you know, I will, I will continue to drink. Basically, I woke up in a bush with my trousers down, um, projectile vomit all over me, white jeans, white short, long hair, white brand new clinicals, and that was enough for me. So the reason why I recommend buying drink before you go out with a bank, go out with fireworks, you know. But also, look at that drink and have a long think about, you know, a long think about what alcohol is doing to you, what alcohol has done to you, what alcohol has done to your family, what alcohol has done to your friends, what alcohol is going to do you, going to do to you, and where are you going to go with alcohol? Because I'll tell you. Are you going to end up in a mental home or are you going to end up in a brown box? It's as simple as that. Right, tip number five. 
Okay, tip number five. So, got a question recently, yeah? Um, how do you pull women on alcohol? Well, first of all, I have a beautiful girlfriend to sleep downstairs. Um, she's a woman, but more important than that, she's the most beautiful, open-minded, with the strongest and biggest heart I've ever met in my entire life, right? Do you think I was I would be capable enough of pulling home drunk? No, because nobody wants a dickhead. Nobody wants an arrogant, egotistic, obnoxious scumbag under the influence, right? Nobody wants that, no matter how much you think. Let's talk about energy vampires. Do you ever get the girls, right, that stick their vans straight into your neck, right? You know? You're literally visiting them on the balcony, right? And they're putting all their problems on top of you. So now not only do you have your own problems, you have these energy vampires problems. So you have your problems and the energy vampire problems. And then your pockets is full from carrying garlic because I'm fucking sick of giving these energy vampires garlic. But anyway, right? This is a valid message in this video. Energy vampires, right? They drain the living life out of me. And I'm sure they drain the living daylights out of you. The problem is, you don't see this when you're drunk for years upon years upon years upon years. You could never understand why. Why the fuck in name of Jesus is, am I surrounding myself with these women? Am I surrounding myself with these absolute, you know, energy vampires, people that drain the life out of you, people that are still chasing the dragon, people that are still fighting the bottle, um, and I feel for them, I feel for them, but the thing is, can you imagine you, you're now suffering with alcohol addiction, and the women that you're surrounding yourself are suffering with alcohol addiction, so now you're suffering with your addiction problems, you're suffering with the energy vampires addictions problems, and you're also suffering with, with the weight of carrying garlic around. Because that's what you that's what I do. I give energy vampires garlic. But anyway, so in this video, you know, send the energy, energy vampires garlic. But but back to this, pulling women. First of all, nobody wants a dickhead. Nobody wants an arrogant, egotistic, obnoxious dickhead on the drink. You know, you might think, oh I got what unbelievable boys on the drink. But where were they the next morning? Did they go back to you? No. I could never understand why I could never get a piece of woman. When I mean a decent woman, I mean a positive, powerful woman with goals, with, mo with the mindset of my beautiful girlfriend, Kaya Sala. That's, that's the type of women you pull. You pull positive women. So try it, you know, you go into the bar, order the coffee. You know, the most interesting person in the bar is the person brave enough to order coffee while everybody is watching. I'm telling you now, try it. And obviously, you know, another message in this video is, Basically, like, don't go to the same bars, right? If you're going to these session bars where everyone's getting off the rocker, right? Where you used to be, you are not going to relate to this because sober life is totally different. You're going to relate to positive people, people that want to do something special with their life, right? People that want to want to be somebody, want to like have, you know, people with work ethic that work towards a brighter future. Having, having an impact and making positive changes on this on this world and that's what it is so you're not going to relate to these people that's chasing the dragon when you are now a totally different person so another message in this video is may as well kill two birds with the one stone is you need to change your circle you need to completely change your circle so no disrespect to anybody in this video and i'm not naming anybody but there is a very, very small few of my friends since day one that is still here now that I'm sober, you know. Do a trick. Here's a trick for you, right? So, do you ever hear of, like, you know, your best friend that's always there for you on night's out, right? What about funerals? What about, you know, when shit's the fan? What about when you're depressed? What about when you're sad? What about when you're on your own on a Monday night and nobody will go out, you know, nobody will go out drinking with you? Where's your best friend now? Then you must ask yourself, are you a real best friend? Because I'll tell you what, here's a trick, right? I want you to never message this best friend first, right? And see how long 
it is how long they go until they call you first or till they message you first when you're not drinking, right? I'm still waiting in three years for my best friends to fucking message me. And I'm starting to think that my best friends are not fucking best friends. I'm starting to think that my best friends were fucking imaginary. Because it's like I had imaginary friends. Because now that I'm sober, they're fucking nowhere to be seen. They're fucking look Peter Pan. No wonder why fucking I'm gone, gone crazy. All these friends. Where did they now? They disappeared. It's like they fell down the sink or something. Do you know what I mean? So, um, let's leave it at that. But the last message we want to send in this video um, is... Look, right? Listen to me, yeah? So basically... Uh, right. It's perfectly okay not to be okay. I wasn't okay for a long time. And I'm just about okay now. When I say just about, you know, everything has to be fabulous. You know, diet has to be reasonably okay. Sleep has to be perfect. You know, friends. I can't surround myself with energy vampires. You know, the intrusive thoughts, the negativity will climb back in. I'll get anxious and that's when I'll lead to end up drinking. So I have to surround myself with superheroes. And these are the people that give me superpowers. So basically, you know, more than likely, you are doing outrageous things under the influence. You probably have an underlying mental health issue. So basically, I did not. I kind of had an idea, but I did not. You know, you may Emma Brennan that is fighting in the Olympics next week. He's the type of people that you should surround yourself with. Olympians with Olympic mindset attitude so he was telling me for years seek professional help get help you're mental you're crazy Glenn you need help I'm worried about you and I tell him the fuck off I tell him I'm great I tell him he's a pussy but anyway he is a pussy but he's a legend but listen right so it's okay not to be okay it's perfectly fine the reason why anyone can call me crazy the reason why I don't outrageous stuff like a lot of people are quick enough to bring up the past like uh, pissing on my mouth, being stabbed, you know, other stuff. The list goes on and on and on. Trying to shoot at people in train stations under the influence, right? I'm outrageous, right? But do we do that stuff sober? No, I don't. That is perfectly fine as long as I don't do it now. And the past doesn't matter. So the thing is, it's like, of yeah. Define the human that defines normality. There's something wrong with everybody, you know. Some people are overweight, some people are underweight, some people are lactose intolerant, some people are OCD, ADHD. Everybody has some sort of issue in life. Nobody's born perfect, not even me. Um, not even Koya Salah downstairs is born perfect. Um, but anyway, the message in this seeking professional help um, over a year ago has changed my life. Literally, I have learned to live with my so-called ADHD, OCD, my, my energy and obsessiveness, right? And I've learned to live and understand enough, right? For instance, I read, I study ADHD, I study OCD, I study lactose intolerant and I still study alcohol. And as you can see, I'm studying it now. It's right beside me. And this is how I've dealt with overcoming alcohol addiction. So what you do is, it's perfectly fine. It's perfectly fine to seek professional help. You don't even have to tell anybody, you know? More than likely, the reason why you are acting up on alcohol or doing stuff on alcohol is because, you know, you could have ADHD. You could have other things wrong. You could suffer with, with anxiety and you drink to overcome this anxiety. But it's only gonna make it worse because you all, you're drinking to overcome anxiety, but then the next morning, you're waking up with three times to four times more anxiety so isn't it better to only have let's say 50% anxiety rather than have 250% anxiety in the long run and use and drink to escape the world the real world and, and this is it so anyway I hope this message in this video helped and um, we'll be working on a book and more than luck I'm going to be locked up and I just want to give a hint and um, it will not be released in my name it will be released under Oscar O'Reilly, you heard it here first. And yeah, I want to wish you all a happy sober day. And um, I want to thank everybody that stood by me since day one. It's, um, it's been a blessing, it's been a pleasure. And life only starts when you become sober.
Thanks.